We have a call to order. Um, this is very exciting. We have two new members to welcome. Um, we have Rachel Maori and Megan Peck. Uh, and so they were both now officially with us. Yay! Yay. Welcome. Welcome. It's so exciting. It's certainly an honor to be here. Fun watching you. Yeah, we're so glad that you got uh, to see what we're working on before we put you to work. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Is there anything you'd like us to know as by way of introductions? I think I mentioned uh, when I visited last time that I'm currently new to Brockhampton. I've been here since four years. Um, so I'm currently um, an adjunct instructor at UMass. And, uh, but I became interested in this job because I've been participating as a volunteer in a lot of the local um, events um, post the election. And um, I just wanted to add a more formal role in kind of helping to improve the quality of life for people in Northampton. Um, the second thing, I'm, I'm, um, I'm a uh, first generation American. I'm um, an immigrant from Taiwan. I identify as Chinese American, um, and so um, I, I guess I've experienced, you know, discrimination in a lot of different contexts. And so I, I'm really interested in you know, whatever work we can do to promote, you know, dialogue, and human understanding, inclusion, and justice. So I'm hoping to learn a, a lot here <laughs> um, on this commission. Observe the last meeting. So, I'm person getting to know all of you better. What do you teach? I teach um, about topics of philanthropy. It's most of my um, career has been um, working as a program officer by foundations. So, you know, it's a very it's a role which I facilitate grant funding to lots of nonprofits. a lot of listening and the needs and um, interests of nonprofits and making recommendations. So maybe some of those skills or experience would be transferable to this role here. I'm hoping it Thank you. Uh, well, so my background is um, actually public health, uh, international health, and I, but I remember it started out of, uh, you know, as a young um, student at I had an interest in human rights, and I decided to, to pursue um, my MPH out of kind of with that lens of trying to address some of those issues. I lived actually, um, I went to UMass when I was many years ago, and I lived in Northampton and loved it. And I, I, I went and worked uh, abroad. I lived in Latin America for years, um, and New York, and I got my degree in Emory. So I moved around a lot, but then about 12 years ago, I thought about Northampton and fondly and uh, I moved back in with my, my family. So I'm enjoying living here and I, I also really would like to learn more about um, this type of civic service. I, I've worked, I, knew, I knew I had the bug because I started working with the elections. I was, I'm a deputy warden. I was really nerding out on that. I was like, there's something about this I really like. And, but I also am involved in uh, community organizing in the area. So I thought this was a great uh, kind of marriage of office, something to learn. And I'm hoping I can bring, I mean, even my public health um, degree, I've been really um, interested in what you all do are doing here, because it sounds a lot like these needs assessments we would do, and where we go out in the community and, and yeah, assess a certain type of need and then evaluate, and then we try to work with that. And they're always multidimensional, um, not, you know, always beyond just health interventions, of course. So, um, so I see that as you know maybe a transferable, but um, I have a lot to learn as well. So I hope I can be of service. We all have a lot to learn. <laughs> I think it's a, an on, a lifelong journey. So glad to have you on with us. Um, on the agenda document, you will see we print our. Um, the language from the city charter that actually tells us what our job is as a, as a human rights commission. Uh, it's in bold paste print there. Um, so that we try to, we keep it on here to remind us of what the scope of our work is, uh, what is ours to do. 
and um, what is not ours to do. There have been a couple of di different iterations of the Human Rights Commission. When it first began back in the 90s, uh, it was actually, for a short time, a place where people could bring human rights complaints. Um, however, the commission did ever really have the authority to do anything with those. So it was um, re-envisioned to what it is now. Uh, so that's just that's something that we keep in front of us to remind us of what our work is. And what else would folks say about Lori, I think you've been here on the longest. Um, I guess I have. Um, um, it, it, the commission went through a bit of a hard time a couple of years ago. It seems to be emerging from that. Um, and um, we seem to have, you know, gained our footing, I think, and know, you know, that there's a lot you can do to educate, and that's a good rule. I know you sat with us for a meeting or two. Do you, do you have any questions of us before we dive into the agenda? Do we go around and say our names? Or that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. you, you know us all. Yeah. I think I believe so, but let's sure. I'm sorry. Pronounce it. They're all. They're all. To be. Rachel. And I'm Karen. Megan. Jerry. I'm the chair, at least so far, and Lori is the vice chair. Uh, we have a practice of rotating minute taking, so tonight Norell is uh, taking the minutes and we'll ask for somebody to volunteer next week to do the same. My laptop's not working, so I'm doing it on my phone, so just so people don't think I'm texting the whole time, <laughs> I just have notes open. Oh my god, that's impressive. Just so people don't think I'm texting. I do have a question. Um, are um, a Booker still is Booker still with us and Joel? Joel is still with us and he told me he was out of town today. Yeah. I did not get a message from Booker. I happen to know he's out of town. Okay. So, yeah. He was here last. Uh, right. Do we have a full continuum? Oh. Imagine that. <laughs> There's nothing we can't do now. And I have to say, I think I kind of joined three years ago and this is first time that we've had a full contingent yeah. in that time. So it's very great. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is the right time or not, but I, ju I just like to share something. I've just been down to see those new civil, or the relative community, the civil rights museums in the South. Mm -hmm. They're quite, it's so amazing. The work that Brian Stevenson has mm -hmm. done in Montgomery, Alabama, the Memorial to Peace and Reconciliation. And, um, and his museum there. His work is quite extraordinary. It is one of the more moving things I've ever done in my life. So, I mean, it's just it's about what we do. It's, it's amazing. We saw the school where Emmett Terry whistled. Well, oh. no, no, they, we saw the school where the, the um, in Little Rock, where the Little Rock Nine yeah. were, a woman spoke to us who'd been one of them. I mean, it was just amazing. So I just was I'm bursting to share it so I could put uh, <laughs> my new business. <laughs> and couldn't even wait for new business. <laughs> Isn't it filter be fun? Yes. Great. Anyone who wants to learn more about that, I'm sure Dean would be happy to share. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, did you all when you signed on, did you have to take the uh, ethics, the online ethics. I just oh, saying, yeah, I need to do. Have you done your? No, just the. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's an online yeah. little video you watch and you answer a few questions. It's no trick questions. Um, but one of the uh, one of the practices I'll share uh, right off the bat is we're not allowed to discuss and and take do business between meetings unless we vote to have a subcommittee do that work. So generally when we send emails out, it's for logistical purposes. How many people, you know, is anybody unable to be at the meeting so we can check the quorum, for example. And then folks would email me back individually instead of reply all, just so that we don't get into a group discussion in the cyber world. 
consents. And if you don't have quorum, you don't meet. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah, this is something I really want to be mindful of because it's new to me. That um, what? So conversation, like if we see each other, we can we do not talk about anything that might be relevant to the board, or we don't want to talk about we don't talk about decision making. Right. Okay. Can't talk about anything that has to do with making decisions. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's exactly all logistics we can't I mean, talk about. Like well, you, uh, you can't talk about it if you have a quorum. a quorum outside of a public meeting. But I think two people could talk about it. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. Um, what you don't? Um, I guess we will need some clarification okay. because we don't want a subgroup of people, uh, like two or three people, saying, mm -hmm. you know, at the next meeting I'm going to. Say this, and you can second it. I'll play it safe. At them. Yeah, that's err on the side of caution. Is what I, yeah, but subcommittees have a different um, right. Yeah, right. the whole committee can delegate work to a subcommittee that can meet between meetings because it's tough. We meet for ninety minutes once a month, and you know more work has to happen between meetings sometimes. Yeah, you have to want. I guess we have some luck. <laughs> we do. There's a lot of goals that we've bitten off quite a, a project for ourselves, yeah. year, which is great. Um, all right, so let's dive into it. Um, there's no public for public comment tonight. Uh, so the next order of business would be acceptance of February minutes. If someone would like to move that. Second. Second. Um, any? I, I will notice that um, Megan's last name is misspelled. Oh, okay. So it's P A I K. Yeah. It's pronounced. P -C -K. It's pronounced what? P C K. Okay. P A I K. Okay. Um, other than that, did anyone see any any changes or additions to make? Just one uh, addition to the, the finishing of the sentence where it says Jerry Wynn. Uh, he also feels a website slash Facebook page and then it would be beneficial to the uh, okay. Unless I'm feeling around for the <laughs> Facebook page. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. What? Uh, so under, it's it's under uh, HRC outreach effort. One, oh, yeah. Two, yes. three, three down. Just kind of Finish this Clarification on that sentence. You didn't leave us hanging. <laughs> okay, I'm still confused. So from HRC effort, it's a uh, if you go three, where the first sentence is generally wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So finish the sentence. Yeah, so would be beneficial. It needs some verbs or something. Mm -hmm. What does yours say? I think uh, ours says something different. Oh, really? He also feels a website slash Facebook page. Oh, this one says oh, could work in his oh. experience making surveys. Oh, oh, oh okay. So maybe, yeah, I, ca maybe yeah. I caught it before yeah, I reviewed this out. Okay. Maybe it's showing me a preview of the, of the first. Well, what, what it says now on the version I have is could work, and he has experience making surveys. Okay. Um, but so how, do they, how does this get fixed and get to See, are you, do you do it or should yes. I? Yes, um, I'll just I'll change. If you can send me that language, actually send me just the sure. updated version, and I'll send it to the court. Okay, great. Okay. And then, uh, does yours say what time we adjourned? So yes, it does. Okay. It says it says XXX. Oh, okay. My okay. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> it says adjourned six fifty eight. Okay. And yeah, so I'll send you this okay. this version here. Great. I'll fix I'll fix the mistake. Thank you. All right, with those um, adjustments, all I have a question. Oh, yes. Minutes. Are they usually are they posted online? Are they, posted? they are supposed Just to be. We're a little behind on that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But we can't post them until they're approved, is my understanding. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, yeah. I have to we see. Oh, we oh, oh, here. So, like, uh, it wouldn't be till like, the, the month after. So did we vote on that? Um, yeah, with those adjustments, uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Staying? Okay. Great. And let me just, can I say one thing?
really quick, Karen. Um, mm -hmm. Just so Rachel and um, Megan know, I I've taken on the creating the agenda with Karen um, and then setting it up. So that's why you get the agenda for the week. And I get the meeting. I think I can um, take the priority of the chair to rearrange the agenda a little bit. So before we start working on the listening circles project, can we ha go into the updates? Um, We've already met our new members, but uh, Neural visited the Committee on Disabilities and the I was, I sat in on the CDDG grant hearings. So can we report on those? Sure, yes, so for um, the committee, on disabilities we talked i'm just trying to remember it all straight in my head so um, we talked about a couple of things one of the things they're most interested in is having the human rights commission kind of be there um, to assist and support them with just any issues that they might have or things that are coming up so i talked about ways that we'd be able to do that um, and what we can do as a committee in order to be able to help out mm -hmm. um, one of the things they talked about for example was they're talking about a new parking space that um, a handicapped parking spot that they're looking to have, um, I think, near Roberto's, and there's a conversation between it possibly being across the street from Roberto's or right in, like, across the street from Roberto's or right in front of the street directly, like, in front of Roberto's. And they were saying that that area or location would be better for them than the other one because I guess the way that the other one is positioned, um, cars can come around at a corner without seeing um, someone who's handicapped if they have to get out, get the wheelchair out, get all that stuff. So they're going to be putting in a recommendation for that. So that was something I brought up as something that if they were to present that to the Human Rights Commission, that's something that we could support them with um, if we so agreed to do so. Um, and we could co-sign that or we could show that we support it as well, where I'm not really sure who they had to send it to, um, send that recommendation to, but I was saying that's something the Human Rights Commission would be able to back up and help in that kind of way. Another thing that they're currently working on, um, which I had written down on a sheet of paper, I had all my notes, but I just realized I'm already here that I don't have them on me, but I'll type them up and send them. Um, but they are working on, so I don't remember the specific name of it, but basically a packet full of a bunch of different like ADA rights and the way that this is city complies with them and doesn't comply with them and things that I guess Northampton can be doing to be doing better and just various recommendations that they have um, for the city of Northampton. So that's gonna be, they showed it to me, it's pretty thick um, and we can look through it if we wanted to or welcome, they welcomed anybody from the Human Rights Commission to look through it. But that's something that they're going to be um, releasing soon and doing some more work around and was something that they were curious and hoping that the Human Rights Commission would be able to support with. They wondered if we could meet like as a full commission with their commission to go over it so they could explain it a bit better to everybody and see if that was something we're interested in. I talked to them about how we are doing listening circles and how um, speaking with people with disabilities is part of what we want to be doing in our listening circles. And so I expressed that that's something that we'd be looking to understand and learn more about um, various groups in Northampton and what they need and what they're looking for in ways that we can support them. So this was perfect timing, really. Um, they were very excited by it, like super excited about the opportunity of collaborating with us. Um, so I talked to them about that as well. And then I let them know that they could come to our meetings as well and told them the day and time and place that we meet um, in case any of them wanted to come. And that's kind of where we left it off at, gave them my information and I think they'll reach out. Um, but we can also reach out to them as well if we want to do set up a listening circle or tell them this month or this day is when we're going to be coming or anything like that just to kind of update them or see if we wanted to go and learn more about this um, packet of recommendations that they're going to be giving but I thought that was super helpful because at the end of our year we're planning on kind of having a little write-up basically so that's kind of cool because they already know what they're looking for and know what they want so it's a really easy way for us to kind of have a better understanding of what kind of support and help they need but it was it was really interesting hearing all the work that they're doing and they're talking about it's more than just sidewalks it's more than just the wheelchairs and all the different issues that they have and ways that they would just love to have the human rights um support on that that was really good just of it thank you so much oh yeah of course it was really fun going and meeting them and seeing how their commission works with ours they were doing like approval of minutes and writing notes and stuff and kept apologizing. I'm like, nope, we go through the same thing, so I totally get it. But yeah, it was really interesting to see how a different commission works, yeah. Are they expecting us, somebody from here to go there again? Or was this a one-time thing? We didn't discuss that. They, what we discussed was um, they had been hoping more that we as a commission could come and speak about the packet. So that's why I told them about the listening circles we're doing. And I wasn't sure what kind of decision we wanted to make if we wanted to have a subcommittee or have the whole commission 
go and meet with them or if we wanted to just make it part of the listening circle so for them to come to a listening circle and that's where they could present those ideas so I didn't give them an answer I just said that I would bring it back to the Commission and then whatever we decided um, I could reach out to them and get in touch and follow up on so I think that would be up to whatever we want to do have any thoughts about um, how we might engage with the ADA packet? It would be great if you could encompass it with the learning circles because they're so um, engaged. Mm -hmm. It would be a nice model for the learning circle to bring it in and not um, duplicate the efforts. But I'm not sure about the, the packet itself. Mm -hmm. Where do they meet and how often? And they meet, I believe, once a month, is it? Um, on Tuesday, the second or third Tuesday? I think it's the third Tuesday. Third Tuesday, and they meet um, in the senior center. The at five o'clock, yeah. Did you all have a place, uh, I don't recall, um, identified for the lear that learning circle? Um, we do, we have not gotten that. Program. I mean, for the disabilities. The, so, okay. But it sounds like they might even be open to giving over one of their meetings for the purpose of this, right? Yeah, that's what it seemed like. So it'd be a great way to have all of them already there at once. Maybe they can bring in other people. Yeah. Um, people are on the commission. Well, there was, I, can't, I don't know exactly how many, but there was a good amount of people. At least eight from what I remember seeing, but I don't know. And they had um, a couple members of the public there too, because um, various people with disabilities were coming and they would bring to them grievances they had. I know one guy was having an issue with a gas station, handicap spot, some gas station or something. So they had a couple of people there. So it's, it's nice to see the community relies on them so heavily as well. So I think they have good connections to the community um, and people really feel that they can go there and you know voice their complaints or issues that they're having and it's well receptive and well received and they actually do the work to kind of you know do something about it, which is really cool. Yeah. So they had a couple members of the public. Are you referring to the Disabilities Commission? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And we did have a set month that we were thinking for that group, to have a listing circle. We've so not gotten that far yet. Yeah. Think, yeah. Um, let's see, so the next, the third Tuesday in April, yes. to the 16th? Yeah. Um, on the third Tuesdays, I'm always in Boston, so I not able to get to their meeting. Um, but if others want to, if, and it, it may be April, it may be May, if others are able to and willing to, to be there. Uh, if there are five of us there, we just have to list it as a joint meeting with the commission. You could or you could? I could. Okay. Yes. In April, but not necessarily in May. This is something we want to make a decision on. Yeah. Well, I just want to clarify. We're talking about going just to visit, not to do a listening circle yet. Right. Okay. Yes, I think yeah, my, what I would, um, ask that their chair is well they it's a response to their invitation to the room, um, and ask for an opportunity to talk to them about collaborating on the listening circle with the disabilities community um, and we could also talk about how we could respond to their request to look at review their materials 
it's not a time that is, I can go stop. Okay. I'm, I'm a bit concerned that we're in my big plans because it's a uh, school vacation week. Mm -hmm. Often we flee, <laughs> not the children, but we keep the town <laughs> with, grand, with the grandparents. So uh, don't go up anywhere, but I'll, I'll make my attention. What's the date? April 16th. I'd have to check too, because at work we usually do stuff for them during vacation, so I have to make sure I'm not scheduled for any not for work activities or anything. So I have to, I, Rachel is maybe in May, Megan is maybe in April, but we'd like to get more than one person uh, from the commission there, if we're going to, especially if we're going to talk about anything substantive to do with that. Um, I will check with Booker and Joel, and we'll see what happens from there. So if I, this is a good example of the meeting, if I go home and talk it out and I realize I can do it. Can I email and do that? Yes. That's logistical. Yes. Yeah, okay. So why do I do that? Okay. About April 16th. Okay. So, um, and the goal would be to kind of really get in stone uh, a, a listening circle time or a locate well or, or commitment to the listening circle. Right. It would cert it, it would be to secure their um, their interest in partnering with us with, for you know a specific learning circle in that community. Um, and hopefully by the end of tonight we'll have a better shape and idea of what, the, what shape that might take. Right. And we're meeting. We we have we have another meeting before then. Um, not just before. Not then. before then. So could we decide? So we would. Um, would we make a, ta a, a a date with them? Would that be open? something you could do? Or yes, we could certainly invite some of them to come to our meeting the following because we'll meet the fourth week in April. Okay. Or even get multiple dates that work for them okay. and then see which one works. And I'll know by Friday or Monday if I can get okay. for 60 points. So I'll let you know you and let you know. Great, thanks, Ron. Okay. Anything else on that, um, on the Disabilities Commission? Kind of disabilities? Thank you for representing us so ably. Oh, yes, of course. It was a lot of fun. Good. Um, the community development block grants happened two weeks ago. Um, it's always so, um, it's a joyous thing to do, <laughs> to listen to the, the grant proposals that come in and um, the, the grant writers come in and explain about what their agencies have been doing for the last year and we get to ask them questions. Um, the commission include the, the committee includes, um, includes some from the Human Rights Commission, um, some from the Housing Partnership, uh, two city councilors, and a community resident who also happens to work in the housing field. And you know, get to ask questions about 
their policies, procedures, the impact of their work, you know, whatever questions we have after looking at their uh, materials, and he was able to engage some good conversations about um, um, about transgender inclusion, for example, with the Big Brothers Big Sisters program, um, about whether agencies are serving um, community members who don't have documentation. Um, so. As much as I could, I tried to represent the Human Rights Commission and our um, and our goals and our mission. And we ended up giving away a lot of money to um, a bunch of agencies that are going to do really good work. So next year, if uh, someone else wants to take a turn representing the commission, it's tough if you have, for people who don't have flexible day jobs um, because it does require a couple of consecutive afternoons. Uh, but it's really rewarding, and that happens every year in March. So you don't have to look in your calendars now, but in the future, it's a, a great gig. Thanks for going. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's, it's just very inspiring. Okay, um, so let's get to the let's get to the chalkboard. Who was that that used to do the chalkboard? Some. TV host, I don't remember. Hmm. I don't want to make a habit of this, but it helps me to organize this this way. Um, I made some notes, which I every got one got yeah. copy, right? Pretty good. From the mind map. Um, and I had put them in the minutes too. Great. Just in text at the end of the minute. I don't think I didn't. Oh, so you guys did not get the right minutes, and I have the whole uh, line. I must have sent the wrong set of minutes up to everybody, so I'll resend it. But yeah, it says we did a mind map and a timeline. No decisions made. Oh, so I. Uh, I have the email one. So I'm seeing this listening circle process. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. I have a whole page of what we did with the mind map. Oh, great. Okay. Well, now you have it. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, the way I organized it might not make sense compared to how we, you know, how you might have organized it, but there it is. Um, so for tonight, we did want to have the bulk of this time be a working session. Um, so I thought I'd like to start off by just naming what um, what of our per mission or per what's our purpose in doing this. So we just have that front and center so we can refer back to it um, and be clear about it. So when we communicate about it, we'll also know what we're, we'll all be on the same page. Um, name a, a few goals that we are hoping to achieve through this process so that We'll have a way to we'll have some metrics to assess how we do, evaluate how we do when we're done. Um, and then I, get, I think we just need to get into um, making some decisions about how many circles. You know, what is the right size for a group our size to do? What are our priorities for listening circles in terms of what communities to reach out to? Um, and we probably won't get to it tonight, but designing the sessions that we'll have with people. Um, and along the way, if we identify the kinds of printer digital resources we'll need to create, um, we can put it there. Oh, that I can also give you an update. I met with the mayor after our last meeting, um, and he is actually uh, okay with us having a revolving fund or a gift account connected to the Human Rights Commission. So he was going to talk to the city um, finance director to determine which setup would be the best, whether it's a revolving fund or a gift account. And um, they were going to try and find a couple of thousand dollars to see money for, for us to do printing, marketing, sending someone to the um, the state human rights conference, like on your own, to Professional development for the commissioners. 
great. So yeah, sure. And then we can start fundraising for it too. Well, oh. Did you say that they were going to start? They were going to try to find how much money? A couple thousand. A couple thousand? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, not not in the municipal budget. It's not. But <laughs> for us, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was thinking when you were discussing this is about the design, but even sometimes about how to get people there. Even just like maybe if you could provide pizza. Exactly. Yeah. Something yes. to make entice That's people. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really good point. Pizza. Yeah. It's, it's a winner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as we are more active in the community and we're able to do more things, I mean, we had talked about doing a bystander training yeah. um, for Northampton residents, but it costs a couple thousand dollars, right? So, yeah, could, right. Solicit some fundraising to help to, to provide that here. That's great. Yeah, it's really wonderful mm -hmm. because having absolutely no funds at all really hamstrings you. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like. Did he say, will it be starting in the new fiscal year? He was going to um, let me know when he had talked to Susan Wright, but I'll send him a reminder. Um, so, you know one thing, maybe it would be helpful if I read to you what I wrote about the mind map, because it has some action steps. Great. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so, HRC listens in the center. Um, entities to draw in, oh, I see, that was what, I was trying to describe it, and you, this is what you had in the middle, right? Okay. HRC listens in the center. Entities to draw in include middle and high schools, youth commission, library, city employees, police, recovery community, LGBTQ, people of color, immigrants, non-English speakers, MANA, soup kitchens, public housing, Casa Latina, Center for New Americans, International Language Institute, Cathedral in the Night, Media, WHMP, NCTV, Gazette Advocate. Northampton Connects, Committee on Disabilities, the Senior Center, Smith College, Business Community, Chamber of Commerce, Cooley Dickinson, Seniors, Northampton Neighbors. We want to be sure this campaign is inclusive of people of color, socioeconomic diversity, all abilities, disabilities, have good generational mix, gender, IG, sexual orientation, those with and without homes. Ways to communicate, in-person listening sessions, online comments, surveys, survey monkey, question mark. And then the timeline, and I'm happy to say that our timelines match perfectly. <laughs> Matt, March and April is our planning and strategy. May, youth CMA listening circle, which is Center for New Americans. June, we didn't have anything. July, public housing and people without any housing. August, September, and October are empty so far. November, the general session, December, you know, the de de Declaration of Human Rights Day. Um, and then action steps were, Jeremy will try to set a date at the high schools. This is information we gathering. Yay. We oh. will compile it all into a report, looking for threads and patterns. And then new biz, Karen, ex oh, oh that's, that's, that's separate. That's okay. continued on for a minute. Okay, great. So that's it. Jeremy. Yeah. Okay, so um, I talked to Dina McCabe, who's the uh, school manager, and was looking for a time in May. Uh, the other kind of component of this, or the thing that was concerned, was having the seniors there um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the same time. So the end of May was really busy. It's mm -hmm. a busy time. They're getting prepared for, um, for graduation and everything. So we settled on May 16th. May 16th, I believe, is... 16th is a Thursday from 12.30 to 2 p.m. So this was during the fourth period of school. So, um, you know, all students uh, whose teachers uh, gave them permission to go could uh, come and voice their concerns rather than having it after school because of transportation and stuff. Mm -hmm. or, um, <coughs> so we could accommodate kind of all perspectives of students. Um, so potential partners, uh, and this is kind of match I mean, for me, uh, I just got the confirmation of that date. So uh, some potential partners are the um, Students of Color Alliance, the Gay Straight Alliance, Sign Language Club, Student Union, Feminist Collective. Um, and one of the things that I'd like to um, kind of discuss with everybody is the structure of this. I have mm -hmm. some ideas for it. Um, it might be different than our, our other ones. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it, if, if we can do this, it's both a way, not only a, a way to kind of hear the concerns of the students and get that feedback, but also 
have the students generate ideas on how uh, they could aid us in our in our duties and how they could aid their own communities right then and there and have a discussion for, uh, on, on kind of, uh, for themselves together as well. Um, so yeah, I didn't know if you wanted to kind of look at these all broadly. Um, I know that May's, May's not too far around yeah. the corner, um, so I don't know if we if um, we could get into the kind of kind of the weeds on what the structure and kind of come to a consensus on that, and then I can go out. I would also say that it might be um, I would probably recommend making a subcommittee. So if we mm -hmm. do need to meet, we can meet on um, at, at at intervals throughout this, so it's not just our our next meeting as well. Um, when you named the partners, Jeremy, are these have you already had conversations with? Rebecca? I haven't had conversations. Okay. This is from the, just the, the 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 list of clubs and activity um, okay. activities that we have. Okay. I know all of these. I know a lot of the students, mm -hmm. and there's certainly we can go. Also, there's a a list of clubs. Um, I'm looking at one right now. Uh, Best Buddies is a great um, mm -hmm. example. Some of them I, I I've missed. There's other things like. We have a young Democrats, but we don't have a young Republicans club. So, to to what degree do we want to, you know, incorporate kind of uh, the, so how we go about that kind of open for discussion as well, and who we want to kind of reach out to and who we want to target. Okay, I think you're I think you're right that the structure of the school based sessions is going to be different from the general sessions. Um, can I suggest that we sort of nail down our purpose and goals yep. first, and then we can work the structure? Yeah, like, sure. Sense? Okay. All right. Who would like to take a stab at identifying what our purpose is in holding these listening sessions, based on what is ours to do, what our mission is?
And we actually began, I don't know if everybody did it, but some of them anyway, began with a reading of the, the, the International Declaration of Human Rights. Some, a piece of it. A piece yeah. of it, yes. Not Okay, so I, I will take pictures and um, make this legible, but I have to offer, off, offer opportunities for a cross-section of Northampton to share conversations about human rights, raise the profile of this commission in Northampton, and to orient our work and advocacy in the future. Yeah. Okay. Great. And our goal is to have people answer this question. Or, so what are our human rights issues? Well, that's the question, that's the how, isn't it? How we're gonna... Well, I guess, I, I don't know. I, I'm just reading from my notes. Yep, yeah, and I'm um, just thinking out loud. Yeah. Um, it sounded like there was another prompt to that from when I heard last time, which was a more specific plan to take this and, and kind of inform the next year. Yeah. And, yeah. and bring that information specifically to for the sources that need to get that's the so goal to, okay so then so goal would be to answer that question so that we can then so answer that question so that we can then um, bring proposals to the proper places in the city yeah. government I guess when I'm thinking about goals I'm trying to think of at the end of this how will we know that we've Done what we set out to do. Uh -huh. So I'm trying to think of goals that will have an assessment metric. Like, oh, I think that. Um, our goal is to reach. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. X number of people to hear from X mm -hmm. number of people. Oh. Um, or um, so measurable goals. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm wondering if we might be able to answer that when we talk a little more like about like how much like how we want to do it because it sort of feels like shooting in the dark to say you know talk to this many people we don't know how many circles we're going to have right how would your percentage wise would be better so for example compared to our last listening circles and we want to say we want to be able to see a 10 percent increase people attending so that way we find a specific number mm -hmm. but more of just mm -hmm. being able to see progress from our last meeting compared mm -hmm. to this one um, I don't know how we would describe the diversity but I think there was only one person of color in the entire in all of ours if I remember correctly I think they were at mine mm -hmm. um, so I don't know how we would do that in terms of like people but being able to reach other people we didn't have any young folk except for I think one 20 year old at mine but otherwise no one younger than that so maybe like a percentage increase compared to from last time to this time. We could say double it. <laughs> yeah. And it would be easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if this would be a goal to um, strengthening our um, partnerships or relationships with these community um, mm -hmm. agencies. Mm -hmm. And in some ways that would be also be more But generating, and I don't know if we got ever got um, any uh, clarification on uh, being able to do a mail a list serv or anything. Mm -hmm. But collecting um, collecting that so we can kind of generate our own kind of individual connections within the community, as well as um, just to kind of educate people on what the HRC does. It's a good kind of time to do that. Kind of, um, it's really nice to always see the um, that. Uh, the Human Rights Commission shall act to promote, like, just 
you know, educating people because that's one of the biggest questions that um, that I receive when um, so using that as an opportunity to kind of uh, educate the individuals that are coming and are interested because they're coming to these uh, to these events. So well, that would be one of the goals. Is yeah, to educate, to educate okay. on mm -hmm. our um, in kind of uh, a clarity of our kind of role and responsibility as a commission. Ask Jeremy a question. You you listed a lot of groups that you could think of us partnering with in the high school. I don't feel I have any sense of. I mean, do you choose three or four? Do you ask them all to come? I mean, how does one? How do you? What would? Yeah, our yeah. thoughts. I, I think that that you know, this, on those, uh, the, you know, deliberation on that is is definitely welcome. Um, I think that there are. Uh, you know, the advocacy of each group is is different. It's you know different involvement, different times that they need, and different um, different things that they're working on uh, throughout the year. Um, I think that based on the structure that we do, the amount of time in which we may want to give uh, groups, I think that you we probably would want uh, just uh, off the top of my head, you would be want wanting to be welcoming to any to any group and see uh, how we could accommodate any any group. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just be really aware not to kind of alienate individuals that want to participate or, mm -hmm. um, and if, if we did have kind of questions or concerns, how could we work together to kind of resolve those issues as well? Does, I'm assuming that group that you listed includes some of the leaders of the, you remember the march? Oh yeah. And I can't remember what the leader was called. Yeah, leader. so it was March for Our Lives. And, yes. Yeah. And the other part of this is that there's student involvement. There's a lot of cross-pollination of all of these. Sure. So student yeah. union, there's, there's a lot of um, involvement. So yeah. there's a good, um, uh, to that effect, yeah, yeah. there's, um, you can have a good kind of consensus throughout the groups. Are we comfortable with this list of goals for now? I was percolating about the more um, I mean, it seems like we really want to kind of get um, some degree of consensus on confidence moving forward with whatever the results are. And I'm just trying to think qualitatively. Mm -hmm. There might be a qualitative way to um, to kind of measure that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might be about our own confidence as, as the commission bringing this information forward. Right, because we do want to make a report to the city council at the end. Is your hand up or are you stretching? No, I'm stretching. Okay. Okay. Um, so, and we do want to think about some percentage or number of participants. And we did say that we were going to have an opportunity to participate online as well. So that will, we'll have to talk about that too. All right. Um, let's begin then talking about May 16th. And Jeremy, um, I'm wondering about Smith Vocational. Is it, it probably isn't possible to share the invitation with them and have some of their students walk down the street? Yes, it is. Is it? I've, I've done things and they, they okay. do do that. Yeah, um, I'm not familiar with it myself for okay. for assemblies, but I'm more than welcome to explore that that option. And I I know, you know, a lot of people over there. And the also, Smith Folk does a lot of field trips, so mm -hmm. they if any nothing else, they could bring a class over. Yeah. Well, do they have group organizations? I'm sure and they like do have student yeah. organizations too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with that. As much as that high do we want to try and have both? High schools invited? Well, I don't know if they'd have room for the entire high school. Well, yeah. Smith -Bogue. So I guess you'll have to just ask the administration at high school what they think makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but if possible, yes. Yeah. I have a question for you, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. um, are you imagining that this is something you want several of us to be there with you for? Uh, preferably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and 
you want me to kind of give the uh, structure that I, I kind of laid out right here, mm -hmm. just real quick? Um, so we mentioned the, so kind of the pre-production of all of this, um, we mentioned the kind of outlet for doing some sort of online survey. We could, I, I have the ability to, and with permission of uh, Brian Lombardi, of course, um, we could uh, do a kind of form in Google Forms and, you know, um, collect uh, some data about the concerns. Uh, and then during the, uh, the actual events, uh, it would be approximately an hour and 15 minutes. 10 minutes would be kind of an introduction of the, HR, of the HRC, uh, just who we are, what, our, what, what we've been working on, what our goals and purposes. Uh, 20 minutes of kind of a data, an overview of the data that we've collected and uh, kind of just a comprehensive overview of, of that. And then the, the bulk of it, the uh, 45, to 45 to 50 minutes of, uh, this, of student groups going to their um, generating kind of questions and, and um, uh, the kind of strengths and challenges that they've faced and they've seen in our community and having them voice that and present that to the student body at large in the, in, in the auditorium as well as, uh, as to the, the HRC as well. Um, th that's just a very, um, so breakouts, so depending how big this is, so when we were looking at, when we were looking at the auditorium, the auditorium is not really conducive to the, to the breakout sessions that we've had. So mm -hmm. it's, um, if we want, we can scale this down and do a, a smaller version. It would probably, what happened, the, my only concern about that is that we're losing a lot of voices. We have the ability to have a lot of voices in the room. And if we have the smaller uh, session, if one class, for instance, comes, that's 20 to 30 students. So if we have a smaller session, that's only two classes. So it's not necessarily representative of the school. Um, so this is just kind of a structure that I started just brainstorming right now. And if there's a way for doing um, feedback or having that, that seven to 10 minutes to present some of those things would be essentially breakout sessions beforehand that the that the student bodies did in their kind of um, kind of surveying and getting a, an idea of what the concerns are within the school and then coming and presenting their findings. Okay, so if I just to yeah be sure I understand. So these the um, the student groups that you named as potential partners. Mm -hmm. As soon as maybe next week, you might say. Here's an online form. Survey your people in your group. Talk to your friends. Gather information. Right. Then on May 16th, they're going to show up. But also anybody else in the school is, whose teacher lets them can show up. Yeah. It's, it's uh, just to clarify. It would actually uh, sending the survey to the entire school. It's the entire school. Okay. So um, and then based on that, having some kind of aggregated data that could be analyzed by these by these clubs, taking that data, having their analysis with their perspective and their own concerns that they've been addressing, and kind of showing the individual um, kind of the indi individual perceptions of, of and concerns okay. based on that. Okay. So each club would have seven to ten minutes. Yeah. Five to and we could I mean to all these numbers are amendable yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. I have just a question, because um, I kind of can't remember this. When you have a general assembly like this, um, it, it, people have to get permission to leave class, or usually there's a sign up sheet, and sign the teacher sheet. will and bring their entire you sign class. Up, yeah. So a teacher might bring an entire class. Yeah. So it depends really on the teacher and their interest in this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, depending on also what's going on in that class, if you're at the end, you know, if you have a test scheduled, for instance, um, there's there's a couple of different factors, um, but yeah, there's a, and it also depends on on what it is as well. So we had a there was a shark a, an assembly on a, a sharks and it was just a science kind of a TED talk esque thing. It was not that well populated last week. There was a Northamptons and the whole, the whole place was packed. <laughs> so, so there's a, a, a big difference in kind of who shows up and what, what the, if the teacher finds it beneficial too, that's another thing. Can any of you hear saying? I don't yeah. <laughs> yeah, <so I'm> <laughs> okay, 
Um, but also, I've, I've seen that students have asked for permission when they, if their class isn't going, and if they're event organizers, for instance, or you know, they are, you know, something that they really want to do, they can also ask for individual permission to go as well. And so, uh, do you have you thought about how many questions would be in the survey? No, that's I, I. This is this was all just kind of coming up with it and brainstorming um, in the last kind of day or two. Um, so I welcome all suggestions yeah. for questions, and maybe it's even off of past things that we've kind of created as a commission as well. And so the groups at the assembly would present what they findings, of, or would they would they be interacting with the audience at that point about? Uh, it's question. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's open for interpretation. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, the students having the ability to kind of condense this down and digest it through the lens of their of their club and uh, in their the kind of demographic that they're they're um, kind of representing, I, I think would be beneficial. Um, and yeah, and we could even have if the student union was aboard, they could even do. Kind of a, a comprehensive data analysis that 20 minutes rather than the, you know HRC doing that. The more student involvement, honestly, I think the better. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that absolutely. the more ownership that they'll have, totally, and the better it will be. Absolutely. So this one might not necessarily be something that we're using as the you know the template for all no. of them, mm -hmm. but I think that it's you know, beneficial. But right. this is something like when I was in high school, I wouldn't have known what that meant data analysis. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. they know how to do that. Yeah, and I mean, we could cert I could certainly, uh, you know, show them and, and um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then with there, it seems like it's always good to have an opportunity to let people speak just who didn't do any advanced work. So that would there be a component of that? Yeah. So in the past, what's worked uh, in these is uh, if, if we could amend this. So you know, instead of these numbers, we could have. 15 to 20 minutes at the end where the students write questions and then there's, you know, they're coming kind of up and down in, in uh, collecting those questions. I've also seen it where they come to the microphone and ask questions as Wait, well. Or, but what about, see, we want to hear from them though. Uh, in, just your, your it, the. So like, say there's a student who didn't do, isn't in a club and comes and just wants to say, I. I have a shitty experience. Yeah, in. so the, it would be collecting questions from the audience that's that's hearing the, the interpretation. Or comments. Does that make sense? Or comments. Yeah. Or, com I, or comments. I, I feel like we want to hear from the students what their experiences are if they want to talk about it. Yeah, so I think that there would be double, there's kind of double data collected in that sense, mm -hmm. is that they first take the survey, then there's an analysis or reflection of the survey, and then there's thought, a reaction to the analysis of the survey and clarifying questions right. so as we'll the event is going. We'll get some collective data of you know this group of high school age youth, and then we'll get individual anecdotes through the stories. And is it an anonymous? Yeah, com right. confidential. Confidential. Yeah. So they can. And 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 so in terms of the survey, you feel like you could reach out to Smith Folk to see if they'd be willing to take give their students the survey too. I, I can reach out. I I'm, I feel confident about the realm of Northampton High School. Yeah. To be honest, um, I don't have the connections and the co and the kind of the relationships built at Smithville. Yeah. But I can certainly I can certainly uh, reach out. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any contacts there either. I mean, I could look on their website see if they have a club that has a mentor. I wanted to suggest, you know, Amanda Lennox. Yeah. She so she, the, the Northampton. She's with the Northampton Prevention Coalition, and they have worked with a small group of students too. So they might be part of the partners. And she has. She used to work at Smith Oak, so she might have connections over there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you mentioned that they wanted to help with. Yeah. Yeah. So what can you speak of? Oh, but he mentioned that. You might want to have a sub form a subcommittee oh. um, to both put this together. Um, what kind of work would the subcommittee, would the members be able to do? Like, would they be able to work on this, the survey questions, make contact with Smith Oak people? Um, 
Yeah, I would love to. Yeah, so I would love to have a consensus of the questions here. If we don't come up with it uh, this this month, the subcommittee can meet, generate a whole bunch, and then we can kind of pick all, all the ones. Um, the other part is just meeting with the students, and I can I can set up a meeting for, for different representatives of the of the um, of these clubs and sitting down and just talking about logistics, talking about you know making sure that they're telling people about the survey and that all kind of voices are heard, um, and then. The other part is just sitting down with them and showing them and reviewing the data and, and kind of guiding them in, in the, the presentation part and putting together the presentation, I would say. I have one more question. Um, how important do you think it might be to kind of um, not involve, the t just let the teachers know what's going on because we need their support to have them, to have get as many students as we can, I would have thought, to the actual event. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we have monthly faculty meetings. In fact, we have one next Monday, and I can kind of put it on their radar. And then as it approaches, um, and when we finalize the survey, I can send that out to our kind of faculty all and have them um, have, you know, they can help facilitate and have the kids take their the survey. And are there still like teacher advisors for each club? Yeah, there's teacher yeah. advisors as so well. Usually from what I, I don't know, I haven't been there in yeah, no, no, said, no, no. but when I was there, if the teacher advisor, if the club was doing an event, the teacher advisor was the advisor for that club, they'd be more apt to bring their class mm -hmm. as well. So getting the adults involved can also get those teachers in class mm -hmm. bring their classes down. And I know too, with the survey, if there's, they know that there's an upcoming, I don't know if it's the same, but I know some, we know about an upcoming thing, so we kind of pressure our teachers, being like, we want to go to this really bad, and yeah, if yeah. the class wants to go. <laughs> Teachers would usually be like, all right, fine, and they'll reschedule things and move things around <laughs> yeah. so that we could go. So yeah. we do the survey, and that kind of brings up some interest in that could get more students there. So just in terms of dates, um, if we want the clubs to be able to reflect on the data that comes from the survey, we'll need a close date, and then we'll need a release date to know, you know how much time does it, do we want to give them to respond to the survey? You know, high school timing kind of thing. Yeah. So I think the tricky thing here is that our next meeting is at the end of next month, and then there's mm -hmm. it's really kind of quickly thereafter. So we meet the twenty fourth of April, I think. And that's like three weeks from May sixteenth. So that would be three weeks. I think that's too little of time. Um, if there are, so we might need to just use our kind of time wisely here and come with, up with some general points of where we want to take these questions or even the questions themselves and then put the trust in the, that the committee will kind of make that decision. But I think that releasing a survey, getting this on the radar and then out to the students could be somewhere in the April 10th or break, I would say, would be um, all kind of something wise here. Um, and then maybe a reminder in the week that they come back. And then, yeah, and then the week they come back. We would also, if we get it out then, so that would be, we would meet on the 24th, so then it would be out, if we did it April 8th, for instance, that would give a full week then there's a then there's the vacation week and then there's one two three days before we meet so we'll have a, a good amount of time for that and then from there we'll have one two three weeks to review and analyze and kind of condense our okay. of the students so the closing the survey on uh, closing the survey yeah, closing the survey on the 23rd or 24th, depending, and mm -hmm. we meet then, and then we can kind of review everything and kind of get our take. Great. Do you usually get a fairly good return? Mm -hmm. at, a, at, at assembly? No, at, at a, for a survey. I don't know if you've done for a second. So I know that I can survey all my students, so that's mm -hmm. at least right there, 100 kids. <laughs> so that's a pretty good, pretty decent amount. I have a lot of um, teachers that are advisors and then just, res you know, respect kind of 
the you know kind of work like this. So um, if I, I think that we would be in a really good position if, out of the 875, 900 students, we got a quarter to a third. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm hoping for you know approximately half, um, and that would be a good uh, kind of would be a good representation. Um, I also think it's nice when a, kind of a, it's a it's a teacher gives you know five minutes to do a survey or things like that because then it's the population of the entire class rather than the club going out and saying hey yeah. you know I already know you yeah. can you can you fill this out and so you get it you get a good. I'm just a, this is a question for everybody. Do you think actually that the kids would like the idea that they're helping us get our project going through their participation in this? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, they're, not just they're their doing meeting, but for our whole project. If, you know, this yeah. is our this yeah. is our sort of pilot. Mm -hmm. How we're going to lay these out? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I'm also just just popped into my head the um, mayor's youth commission might be really interested in. I did write them. Cool. Down. Yeah. Um, in in helping kind of facilitate this and being a kind of a, a, a part of that. I think that, that would be. But yeah, they, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, they have a lot of um, they're great organizers, great organizers. Mm -hmm. So I'm really kind of mystified about what questions we'll ask. Like how how do you put human rights in a survey? You know what I mean? Like, um, what did you all do for the first? Do you have the question for the first uh, round of? The, they were meet. It was um, you know they were meet. It was meetings, and we we do, but I didn't have them with me. I was thinking that too, and just in terms of intersectionality, mm -hmm. because of course they're young people, but they're also you know, people of color, women, yeah, uh, yeah, young women. Yeah. So it, yeah. Get those questions in a way that allows for their whole identity, all their identities to be there. Yeah. Well, uh, and also like how, if, if it's a question that is a long narrative answer, how do we compile that into data? Yeah. So it seems like we don't want that. We don't want narrative answers, do we? I, I think that it, I mean, it, I'm actually, it's playing right into what I've been doing for the last like four <laughs> days, but coding of uh, just, so I've been going through. I'm, I'm doing a paper, for instance, on um, on kind of gender disparity in computer science right now for a class. But I got long answers, uh -huh. and then from that long answers, you can get quantifiable data from certain trends that you see. So um, one of them is I thought I was going to break the camera. That is fear of, of using equipment, or I didn't think I was going to know enough for the class. That's inex that's um, inexperience. So we can take that and not only is that quantifiable data, but then it's really kind of, you can take that and put it, you know, the, the most poignant uh, ones you can use as representative mm -hmm. of. Um, and those are kind of ways to really drive that kind of point across. Mm -hmm. um, it would just be going through that, through, through that data, right. which is, <laughs> which is um, can be exhausted, but it also can be a very um, rewarding experience and a lighting experience because it's not just clicking numbers and on a scale of how much you agree to disagree yeah. or disagree. And then is it realistic, I just want to really ask if it's realistic to do this in the time frame and I'm wondering, did you talk at all about possibly having this meeting in June? So June the seniors are, are um, and, graduating. Right, so is that the worst thing? I mean, I you, you lose a valuable portion I would say of, of, of students um, the organizers of these clubs along a, a lot of times are seniors okay. as well so you lose a lot of your organizational power um, and I think and the other part is I think it's manageable okay I think it's okay. manageable. I think for the survey I think um, because it's short time in terms of doing the analysis that it should be a you know a small number of questions five or six questions yeah I did most of them um, multiple choice answers with you know one long form answer that people can add in. Um, just because I think that's going to be easier to capture the, the data uh, in that short amount of time. And we're also going to invite stories in in the face-to-face. -face yeah, time. right. Well, that's the other part, because we're doing our own analysis afterwards. So yeah. this analysis is just to be able to do the presentation, but we can always look at 
their answers as well, at, like in the meeting and whatever they write for our own bigger analysis at the end. So we don't, mm -hmm. I don't know that we have to feel so pressured to get all of it in there uh -huh. within that time frame as long as we have like a general thing that they can present at the listening circle. Yeah. yeah. But then we'll have time to go over it. Will it be recorded or can it be recorded? Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> depending on what the, the level of confidentiality we want. Right. Um, but we have the ability to do so. So we can Yeah. We could at least record the here's the analysis of the surveys. You know, people might not want their individual stories recorded, but yeah. yeah. I think that we should not try and bring Smith folk into this. I feel like that's okay. Too too much to try to do without an existing relationship. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it's probably better to keep it simple. Yeah, as simple as we can. It would be it would be less um It'd be less worries for me because yeah. I, I I can run around the school and yeah, okay. find different yeah. people. And yeah. we may be able to you know capture them at the beginning of the school year in September. Yeah, you yeah. know, point you've got some more time. Should we talk about the questions? Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, do we want to capture any demographic information? What kind of demographic information? I don't know. I mean, my, I don't know what I'm. Gender, if they identify with, like, whatever they identify as, mm -hmm. um, age, race, socioeconomic status, if they're willing to. Maybe those could all be optional, so they don't have to fill it in if they want mm -hmm. to. But I'd be really interested in seeing that and seeing if there's a difference in answers depending mm -hmm. on which category people fall under and where there is that intersectionality. Mm -hmm. That's just my, my own preference. How do you ask that question about socioeconomic? Is there a standard way to ask that? So like how much money does your family make in a year and then they'll have like the different a brackets? Very specific number. Yeah, like this between this number and this number greater than this and this. That's what I've seen in other surveys. Mm -hmm. I wonder if um, my kids had no idea. I'm yeah. not sure. <laughs> <laughs> My kids would think we make nothing based on what I say about yeah. our budget. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're fair. Uh, I would, yeah, I don't know if, but you know, yeah. Yeah. but would they, I, you know, things like working class, working class middle class. class. What, yeah, what do you do? You, do you have a feeling about? Or do you identify? How, do you do you identify yourself? Mm. How do you identify yourself? I I don't I don't know mm. especially. This we can, um, I'm going to suggest we ask our subcommittee to okay. yeah. go deep on that. Um, so maybe to have the demographic information, like their holistic backgrounds. The language is for like, you know, might be reasonable but yeah. We've got to keep that bit simple. These, the de I mean, I think Democrats are a really good idea. I like that very much. But if we're going to get into the human rights thing mm -hmm. at all, mm -hmm. and we only need want to have five, six questions, yeah, right. all, all told. I mean, I just know a huge survey puts me off still to yes. say yes. something that feels manageable out of interest. So I'm just going to throw something out, I'm going to throw a piece of spaghetti at the wall. Do it. But like, do we want to ask a question like, have you experienced racial, sexual, uh, sexual orientation discrimination in this high school? Like, I don't. I, I guess I'm just not clear on how specifically we feel like we want to be, and what kind of can of worms do we want to open? So would we ask, like, have you experienced these in your lifetime, or, you know what I mean? What do other people think? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think it would be uh, just limited to the high school since it's the citywide, but yeah. in, um, you wouldn't be limited to the high school. That's, right? That would be my first I, Yeah, uh, I think impression. it makes, yeah, you don't want people to feel that rational in that high school. Right, okay. Unless so, it's a school thing. But we want to know right. if they've experienced racial discrimination, sexual harassment, um, 
yeah, any kind of oppression. And then, you know, but you do bring up the point, do you want to, do you want to, are we going to then code it later about institutional versus, you know, systemic institutional versus individual? Um, so I, I, that, I see, I mean, that's an actually important piece of information if institutions are, mm -hmm. you know, are, are the ones causing them. And if we ask, have you experienced it, do we, do we then say, give us an example? I've never created a survey, so I'm yeah. just. Um, I think I would ask, have you witnessed examples and have you experienced examples? Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think I would ask, do you, um, a, a, a spectrum question, like, I believe um, human rights are taken seriously in Northampton. Strongly agree, strongly uh, disagree. I think it's a very good, something like that. Yeah. And do you think we should ask the question um, of the, the high school? I believe human rights are taken seriously in Northampton High School. Like, you know, so, so I, I thought I heard, okay, we don't want to. And maybe the idea wrong. of it being mm -hmm. for, so I don't know, I don't, being a youth, when they come, they would ask when I was, <laughs> obviously, like at the high school stuff, or even in college, come and ask questions about the high school or our college. It felt like I wasn't a part of the larger community because it was just mm -hmm. kept to the yeah. high school. And I would want to feel that I had a voice and part, because all the other ones that we're going to be doing is supposed to be a representation of Northampton as a yeah. whole. So why, as youth, are we only talking yeah. about our experiences in high school and not our lives as citizens of Northampton? Well, I'm not suggesting we only it. ask about the high school, but it almost seems like, what if there are kids that are having bad experience in the high school? Do, don't we want to know that? I mean, that's I where they spend I don't so think that's time. our job. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I think we're looking for... Okay. It would be... It's and maybe in like the narrative part, if they oh. mention the school. Okay. Like if it's happening in the school, maybe they'll mention it in there and that'll stick out as something. But, but yeah, but how do we get oriented about what type of, I guess we're going to leave some open quality of fields because it is, I am kind of interested in where it's coming from, you know, if institutions versus kind of um, Individual. individuals. Okay. Is it a cultural problem, okay. a cultural problem of the city or is it, um, you know, but I, I have to think about how you capture yeah. that. Yeah. Um, multiple choice. Oh, that's a great question. Wait, can you repeat that? In what context? I mean, as a, if it was multiple choice, right? Yeah. In context. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, that's great, because that's really yeah, that's Can you finish yeah. that sentence for me? In what context um, have you experienced or witnessed forms of discrimination? And then give them a choice. I'm sorry, I'm literally making the form as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing no, like, like the start. You just uh, like give that brass oh. back. <laughs> is, the, is the term that we want to use discrimination? Okay. You know, just thinking like, about the whole of human rights. I mean, it's a question. It should be something like, um, with the survey, we should kind of define what we like. I know, I was yeah. Yeah. That's the hub. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, disrespect of human rights. And yeah, because discrimination also has its own connotation. Like, if you have been sexually harassed, would you consider that discrimination? It is. I I do. But would a teenager think of it that way, or they just think about other types of discrimination? I don't know. Or if you've been bullied. Yeah. Is that discrimination? Is that something more? Right. Well, I think words? if we well, say, "Have you witnessed examples of human rights being disrespected in Northampton?" Then they can identify. You know, it might. Yeah, I, you know, sexual harassment fall under that, right. fall under that. Well, if, I guess, you know, when we think about what our scope is, it's like we are supposed to advocate and be an information resource for the rights guaranteed by law on the basis of race or color, gender, physical, mental. So maybe we should try to keep, maybe we should put our mission statement at the top of the survey. And almost in the definition of human rights, too, right. to give it a context. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it might feel very squishy to people. I wonder if in that, have you wit ex witnessed or experienced, 
and whether we actually need a sort of checklist of various kinds of. Mm. Um, the thing I worry about is the checklist is we're going to miss something, mm -hmm. and then that, that person I feels. Yeah, you know, could say other, other box other and they can fill in what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I think sometimes people need examples to kind of jog their language. Sexism, ableism, all the isms. Um, well, I guess I would I would draw it out a little and say, you know, her, you know, her misconduct or discrimination based on sex. Instead of just saying sexism, mm -hmm. I'm just. You want to use a verb? You mean like yeah? I'd like have, a, you want to have an action followed by the descriptor. Yeah. Somewhere I'd like to get bullying. Yeah. yeah. Which is exactly been, yeah, intimidation, intimidation or yeah. Um, yeah. Boy, we're asking a lot. We are asking a lot. I almost feel that that's we're getting we're almost done. <laughs> yeah. Really, right. Because we do we can't. Right. But is your question, Davina, have you experienced bullying based on these things or bullying as like another option? You know, I, I would mean? think I would want bullying as a, as a slightly different option because okay. I think you can, I think it can exist sort of on its own mm -hmm. without all the other things. Mm -hmm. I think they all exist separately and interconnectedly. Yeah. And I think it's well in work and at school. Um, this makes me want to research um, other surveys that have already been done to see about language, because we, frankly, we would spend like hours in public yes. health on right. like one question. We think we have it, and someone else would interpret it. Uh -huh. Of course, we were. Not volunteering either, so we had like this nice staff or so. It's really it's a tough, it's a, yeah. it's a tough thing to get. You know, yeah, right. Yeah, so if we didn't have to read it, and there's a lot of ways to get it wrong. <laughs> yeah, nice. yes. yeah. But that, that's why open ended in that way is is nice because then it, it captures some of that. And to always have either. Yeah. yeah. You mean like maybe there's an example of a survey that someone's done? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. But probably yeah. just just to kind of get the language right. Also, just in terms of sort of examples, if we have our um, our sort of goals and our mission, I think a lot of them are included in there. I have a, a suggestion. So I have um, from the United Nations, United Nations uh, website the definition of human Right, so human rights are inherent to all human beings regardless of race, sex, nationality, ethnicity, language, religion, and other status. We could put other as well. But we could put in that check down list racial discrimination, you know, sexual identity discrimination, and just have those as the so it's in it's clearly defined and then we have those as the as the kind of the check boxes and then you can kind of gets a little bit neatly together. We start um, mm -hmm. going in different directions. If I feel like we might miss something and we might bring in our own perceptions and be mm -hmm. kind of yeah. swaying it towards a, a thing. Those, 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 so it would be race, um, sexual orientation, nationality, ethnicity, language, religion, and then whatever, and then an other category. Yeah. And then people might actually check multiple ones. But can I just make a wording suggestion? Because yep. based on uh, what Rachel said, you could phrase it like, have you experienced discrimination or 
harassment based on, and then that list. Okay. Yeah, I like the both of those components because discrimination to me sounds vague, a little vague. Um, can, can you say yeah. that one more time? Um, have you experienced discrimination slash harassment based on, and then that list that you just read? Discrimination slash bullying? It just feels to me that sometimes you, you get bullied, not based on any of those things, but you're still in pain. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it so might be really based on those things, but you don't think of it necessarily like that. Yeah, so you want there to be a separate bullying question? I don't know. I'm not sure. No. Like, discrimination gets at the institutional level. Like, you see discrimination coming from, you know, my teacher only calls on the, the male students or whatever. Yeah. Um, and bullying is more peer to peer. See, I think harassment's a good word to use too because harassment yes. is something yeah, that maybe, maybe is less. What's the difference? Like, um, maybe it's less insidious, maybe it's more insidious. I don't know. Let's see, it's more subtle. I think that somebody who might be feel like they could say they had been harassed, mm -hmm. but maybe not that they had been discriminated. No, I think harassed and bullied could, are close enough now. Okay. I would feel fine about that. Okay. But, but still missing that category if, if you feel like you, those categories don't capture what you're saying. I don't know. Yeah. I, I wonder. I mean, there are people who are harassed, and they, I mean, maybe you could pin down what it is. Could be their some. name. Or the, yes. <laughs> or the, you know, they're sort of awkward. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Socially awkward. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they don't wear the right clothes. Or. Mm -hmm. But so then we would say that's what the other is for. Right. And then do we say be specific if they if they if they check other? Do we say be specific? So, af after the checklist, what I'm envisioning here is. Have you personally experienced this type of discrimination, harassment, or bullying in Northampton? Check all the flood. Mm -hmm. And then, um, if uh, if so, um, it kind of explain or explain or elaborate yeah. on mm -hmm. you know what this instance was and how it affected you. Yeah. And, and would so you do the same thing with Have you witnessed it? With the, so yeah, personally that? experienced and witnessed. Okay. And then, so and we would the have details at. Telling the detailed story can be optional. Can be optional, yeah. So the top would be, I believe, human rights are taken seriously in Northampton from a strongly disagree to strongly mm -hmm. agree. Then a checklist of have you ex personally experienced any type of discrimination, mm -hmm. harassment, or bullying in Northampton? Check all that apply. And then that, that list. Um, then the paragraph version, if you wanted to elaborate or give the, give the example in, in detail. And then have you... Have you witnessed um, you, uh, that, the same one, but have you witnessed this? And so that keeps us at five. Yeah, and the so demographics at the end for that narrative part. Uh, uh, demographics at the end. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, what? Yeah, the character limit. Oh, yeah, that's the yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. This is exciting. This is exciting. Oh my god, we're over time. Yeah. Oh. yeah <laughs> so engaging. Um, quick question though. Um, would it be helpful to have uh, something on HRC letterhead to give to teachers and student leaders? That would be excellent. That'd be excellent. Okay. Um, I'll probably do it electronically, but to have that is, is, is a good Okay. Do you want to have a subcommittee? I would I would I would like to. Yeah. Um and it in we don't have to have a time for it, but volunteers for it, and then we yeah. can schedule logistics after I talk to the clubs. Yeah, and agree. just to give you an idea, we'll probably meet sometime during the April, from April 8th to April 12th, and somewhere in that, so we could finalize the, just look over one more time the survey, just extra pair of eyes at least. And, I would like, and I'll volunteer. Cool. Maybe I'll volunteer. Cool. How big do us up it doesn't, we don't have any, uh, I'm available as well, but whatever. Cool. Can I get, um, Megan and Rachel, can I get your emails? Sure. I'm going to send out, resend out the minutes. I'm really sure. sorry about the minutes for everybody. And, uh, so. Yeah, so it's R in my last name, Maori, M-A-I-O-R-E, at Gmail. Actually, okay. you'll, you'll write your address.
Oh, oh great. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, so, you know what I mean? Can I just say one thing really quick? Yes. Before you guys have a committee meeting? Um, just two things that I just thought of. Since we're, in general, we're asking why the listening circles, that question, I couldn't find it. I tried to find it on my phone that we asked um, in our listening circles, which was like, what human rights is Priorities. Sorry. Yeah, Priorities. exactly. Yes. So I wonder if that's something we want to ask you, because that's something that we're going to be carrying over to other listening groups. So yeah, that's a great idea. There. Yeah. And maybe asking if they feel like they have a voice or they are represented within Northampton, because um, Northampton might be a place that human, human rights might be taken seriously in Northampton, but maybe not their voice or their rights. So mm -hmm. that's all. Right, like what issues and priorities. Yeah, yeah. That's, great. Yeah. that's a good point. You're doing great things. You know, because like the voting, for example, the you know, voting it might not be captured, you know, the, the desire to vote for, for, for a 16-year-old. Did you get that? Captured, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, so I took a picture of the board, too. I think they care. So Smart. Properties and... Oh, okay. What was the second one? Are you no. they, have so voice. they have a voice and they feel their, their voice is represented. Voice is represented. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, leave the question of um, ongoing chairmanship of the committee until the next meeting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do that to your clients. No. <laughs> what do you mean? I thought we settled that last time. I asked people to think about it if they wanted to consider putting themselves forward. Oh, I thought last time we all said we like what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Did we ask but, her if she liked yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. But let me just say one more thing, that, that really quickly, but next time we're going to still continue the strategy. Strategizing, because yes. we didn't finish that. We did not finish. But we did a lot. We did do a lot. Yes. It's wonderful. Yeah. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.